So my name is Joey, I'm Ouija. Uh, I speak on Mario 64 and I'm from Michigan. Yeah, so I had a pretty, it was a pretty simple, like easy home life. I had a lot of access to video games growing mm -hmm. up. Um, like my family has always played games. We have like ROMs on CD drives and all that kind of stuff. So I grew up playing games a lot. And I was always really into computers. That was my main thing. I kind of learned how to take apart my own computers here and there. Uh, my dad would help me with that. And my, my interest with like tech in general kind of led me into being more interested in games. And it started off with mainly just playing games casually. I'd play through like, you know, like old Battlefield games or whatever. Um, and then I, I started doing I started doing Let's Plays when I was really when I was eight years old. Uh, I was doing like commentaries on Call of Duty for a while, um, but I felt a sense of like. I didn't belong playing Call of Duty at like eight years old, so I I started just making Mario videos, uh, just let's playing stuff. Played through like Mario Kart, um, you know, Mario Galaxy, all that. And then around when I was eleven, one of my friends who also made videos had started speedrunning, and so I saw that and I was like, I looked up to him a lot, and I really just wanted to, you know, do what he was doing. Um, and so I, I just tried it out. I tried streaming on Twitch, um, and then it kind of just went from there, and I got addicted to Mario pretty quickly, <laughs> saw people like Zaya playing all the time, and I just, I couldn't stop playing from there. Mm -hmm. I feel, I I've run Mario Sunshine and Mario 64 both at a very top level. Mm -hmm. I I've tried Mario Bros. 1 as well, but the, the thing that really taught, like sets Mario 64 apart from the others that I've noticed is a lot of games have the dust mechanic, you know, where you land from a dive or whatever, Mario gets some dust on the ground. Most games, they just keep that nowadays, like Odyssey, Sunshine. It's pretty rare you don't see dust, but in Mario 64, you actually always want to know have no dust. That usually means you're losing time if you do that. And so I think it's, it's that and just the robustness of the movements. It's, it's very much just like you figure out your spacing and you kind of combine it all together inst instead of it being like a big, I don't know, I, I think some of the other games are more like flowy, whereas Mario is, is very like, it's very robust. I, I like it about that. Mm -hmm. Well, for a while I was doing like every category. I was doing 70, 16, I just sort of started 120. Mm -hmm. I think my 16 PB at the time was like 1543 and I just decided to, decided to start doing 120 instead. I got down to like a 144 or so, and then Cheese actually noticed me for the first time, and I was like, I was really excited about that, and he, he rated me. And then from there, I was like, okay, now I have to prove myself. People started talking about me, and I was like, okay, I gotta practice 120 and all this. But I actually ended up taking a break from 120, and I went back to 16 star, and then I discovered I could beat Zaya's 1524, which had been set two years prior. Um, and so I just played for a few months, grinded really hard, and I got that time, 15-17, to beat Zaya. And uh, at that point, I pretty much had solidified myself as like a top runner. Um, and so I, I felt like there were a lot of expectations set for me to you know, pursue more categories. And so I started doing 70 and all that. And then I went from there pretty much. I think for a lot of people, it's, it's largely the game itself that motivates them. The game's really mm -hmm. fun, or they really want to see their time get down. I've been playing for almost 10 years. People like Suiji have been playing for like three years. And so for me, it, it can take for me a bit more of a boost to find that motivation through like the community, um, whether that's like beating a huge new milestone or like Japanese runners coming back. Um, and that kind of stuff motivates me to come back and like prove myself and play the game. Uh, but definitely more when I started what really motivated me was just watching people like Zaya, like just insane, like single star movement, just jump in frame perfect all, all over the place. Um, so I, I, I would get up at like 3 a.m. before school and just play. I'd be really motivated for that. It, it kind of changed over the years as you, you get more used to the movement and you kind of just, your motivation shifts. But overall, that's where my, where my motivation is. Yeah, I struggle with burnout like pretty often. It's usually like once a year at least that I have burnout. Mm -hmm. It'll last for like a month or so. I, I think the way that I, I attempt to go at my runs isn't very ideal. I'll play really, really hard, like 12 hours a day. 
just streaming nonstop, and it, it, it gets you burnt out pretty quickly, as you could probably imagine. And so usually I just take a break for a month. It's weird because I, I find it hard to imagine myself playing Mario again sometimes, to be honest, because when you're really burnt out, you're so out of it that like the game is just so hard to play. But like deep down, every Mario runner has this like true love for the movement and the game. So we always come back to it eventually. And so I, I use that knowledge to know like through burnout that it'll just end within a month or so. I, I've never really worried about losing my skill too much. Um, I'm not really sure what it is, but I, I've been known to come back from D-Rust and be doing just fine, better than I was before. Um, so I ran Sunshine and Mario 64 at the same time, and I was, I was running Mario 64 for a few months, and then I, I tried to go back to Sunshine just for like a day or two to just see how it was, just play around, and I actually ended up setting a world record, like my third attempt back to the game. What the fuck? What the fuck? And so from there, I was like, okay, I can take breaks and be fine, probably. So, I mean, for the longer categories, you'll need to, you need to kind of take more time to get back into it. You got to mess with your muscle memory on every single star and all that. But generally, just getting back into the game is not too hard for me, personally, which is nice. I, I think the default answer is carpetless. But um, of any strat that I've had to implement into a run... Well, Tsukishima cycle was originally a cycle only done by like the craziest Japanese runners who would just throw it at the start of the run. So back in like 2018, he would like randomly pull off Tsukishima at the start of his runs and we'd all be like, oh my god. And so it took a long time to get that strat down. I, I mainly just got it down through doing runs, not even practicing it because it was right at the start of the run anyway. Um, but I think that strat is genuinely one of the hardest like single stars in the run. And it's really nice that it's at the start. It's it's definitely just like a roller coaster where it goes up over the course of the run. You kind of, you kind of start the run and you're like you you kind of already assume nothing's gonna happen. You're not gonna get any kind of crazy times. Um, but then you get out of each section of the run. You get out of Womps and you're like, all right, finally I made it out of Womps. You're like excited. You kind of lean forward a bit. You focus up a bit. Make it out of Dark World. You're like, all right, I didn't die. And then I think. At that point, once you get like a third of the way through the run, you're past like the major points of dying. Your heart rate starts to kick in pretty hard and you just, it's just general nerves really. I think a lot of it is experience. You need to know how to manage those nerves and what they are. A lot of people probably, it's very easy to like panic when you start getting nervous and assume that this is like not supposed to happen. Like, wow, I'm way too nervous. I can't do it. But unfortunately, the nature of speedrunning is like nerves will always be there. And so you really just ha you have to learn to be able to play with shaky hands, especially. By the end, you'll be like hyperventilating into throws. But as long as you hit the final throw, you're good. I, I think my favorite movement in the game is Bowser in the Sky Ultimate Cycle with Task Long Jump. I, I think I, I, for one, am somebody who really likes just being able to hold straight in a level and just go and time inputs instead of having to like grab objects or have to maneuver around things um, and Bowser in the Sky is very much just like you move in one direction you time your inputs really precise you try to get as much speed as you can so I never really was a fan of 100 coin stars for that reason but things like doing task long jump and hitting that and seeing Mario not bonk on the wall in the sky is like one of the most satisfying things so I, I'd say really that whole cycle is my favorite thing but 1517 I I lost it. I I we had just started spring break, mm -hmm. so it was like April fourth or so, and I'd gotten home from school. I was still in PJs, um, and I I hit the throw, and I, I was like hyperventilating, and I like I thought I was gonna pass out. It was like it was the most elated I've ever been, and I thought like my life had peaked in that moment. Um, but then as t as time goes on, and y you learn. You get more comfortable with your stance as a speedrunner, and you know you can continue to compete. Each record you set, or each achievement you get, it's still very exciting, but you kind of, you manage it a bit differently. Um, but it also just may be that, like, the 15-17 was extremely insane when I got it. I don't know if any PB I've gotten since then has matched it in terms of, like, how good it was for the time. So. 
I guess we'll see if a 136 happens. That, that would probably be... I'd probably get pretty excited about that. At the start of 2021, my 120 star PB was still 140-109. And I was never known to be a 120 star runner. Um, so I, I wanted to prove myself in that category. So I, I would start doing runs here and there, try to get like a 140. Um, but I never really expected to get to world record level very quickly. But then I, was, I, I realized 139 is pretty easy. Then I got 139. And then I'm like, you know, I have a minute to save or so. I got 138. And then I got 138, but I, I lost I'm like a minute and a half in tippy or something like that, or a minute. And so I grinded a bit more and got the 137. And so the reason that like that was so exciting was because I genuinely did not see it coming. It was like, I remember just saying like, how did this happen? Like, I can't believe this. Um, because when you're grinding a category like 16 star, it's you very much know what you're in for. You, you know, I mean, you can only make so many mistakes in that category. Um, but in 120, like, if your PB is not very optimized, at any moment you could get an insane run and just, like, demolish your PB. And so that's what that run was for me. And so I, I freaked out because I, I didn't expect to beat the 120 world record that soon. Um, and it's probably why I haven't beaten it since. Yeah, there's definitely a, a culture... Um, culture of people who get mm -hmm. excited about seeing things like five out of five because they want they want like a they want a story to the game they want like an arc of like this person reigning supreme and it's exciting for them and i i, I tend to give into it and I, I look at it and i'm five out of five seems like an amazing thing to achieve and it, it would be surely one of the greatest speedrunning achievements but it requires so much immense work keeping like focus on all those categories at once because if somebody else comes and bops one of them, you got to go back. And like 120 is a way different mindset than zero star. And so I kind of realized that for me, five out of five, while I would love to do it and I might like still try for it and see what happens, I, it can be stressful to hear about a lot because a lot of time you just want to relax and do whatever category you want to do. You just want to have fun, especially if you're really burnt out. It can be tiring trying to do what other people want to see. Um, but I can understand the excitement behind it, for sure. And to be sick if Suiji gets it in the future. Mm -hmm. I developed my movement in the game basically primarily through free running around Peach's castle. Mm -hmm. I, I would just, I would come home from school and I would just turn on the CRT and walk in and I, I would just run around, you know, slide off the slopes, get speed kicks and stuff. I, I think it's very, very important to focus on movement over strats because for one, Strats require a certain level of movement that you're not going to likely have if you haven't, you know, invested a ton of time into it. But, I mean, you'll notice, like, Suiji can get 70-star records so quickly, and it's because he doesn't know these stars, but his movement's so good from just practicing movement and just messing with stuff that, I mean, he can just see a star and just replicate it and get world record in a few weeks just like that. And so I, I just kind of unintentionally, really, I invested my time into just messing around with the game, trying single star stuff. Um, not really a whole lot of RTA at the beginning. And that's how I think I got to where I'm at now. Mm -hmm. The thing is, every speedrunner at a top level, we all kind of have the same just determination, mm -hmm. I think. I don't know. A lot of people like to joke that it's addiction, <laughs> um, which a part of it is. It, it's really fun to just get stuck in that loop. But um, I, a lot of us just, we want to prove ourselves and we really want to when you're really driven to get a certain time and you know it's possible, you see you're some of the best and you're like, we got to get that time. And I think we all kind of have that where we're, we're just determined to prove ourselves really. But I, I can't say for sure if there's anything that sets me apart from someone like Suiji, honestly. I, I think it's a matter of just who works harder for it in the end, really. I think... I don't know for sure on the dates, but I, I believe that I, I started with Mario mm -hmm. Sunshine first because um, a Let's Player that I was watching at the time, at the time Gelato Beach Skip had been found for Mario Sunshine, which skipped about 10 minutes of the game. And so my first ever stream on Twitch was me attempting that trick. And I don't know if I tried Mario 64 before that or not, but within a few weeks I found Mario 64 as well. I think through another Let's Player who had also tried to speedrun it. So I was kind of learning 16 star at the same time that I was learning Sunshine. 
pretty much from there, I just went back and forth with those two. Over the years, I found that Sunshine had too much RNG for me. And I, I love the game and the movement a lot, but I still think Mario 64 is my favorite game, and I'll probably always go back to it. Um, and I've dabbled in like Mario Bros. 1 and like Luigi's Mansion, I tried a bit, but now at this point, I just suck with Mario 64. I mean, Mario Sunshine's um, engine is supposed to be derived from Mario 64's. It's essentially mm -hmm. the same thing. And so the movement can be translated fairly easily. But in Sunshine, it's very much so about preserving speed because the fastest form to move in that game is a water slide. And so oftentimes you want to do spin jumps out of that or double jumps out of that. Any, I mean, any empty space you see in that game is usually a water slide. Whereas Mario 64 is like, you're always doing something. You're always clicking buttons. You're always finding places to wall jump and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. It was pretty similar because when I got my first Sunshine record, uh, Nindide had 114.40 mm -hmm. and he had also had that for two years. So I got the 15.17 and that was the first 16 record in two years. I started doing Sunshine again. Um, and so it was really a similar story of just trying to bring down a really top runner who had been just sitting at the top for a couple of years. And so I was really excited about that, but I had actually been up like 30 hours or something when I got it. And I, I was like so tired. I, I think it, it didn't hit me how excited I was. Um, but the next two that I got were definitely much more exciting for me. And I mean, if I had to compare them, I think in Sunshine, it was more about proving myself to my to my peers, like JJ and stuff, trying to barely bop him. Uh, in Mario 64, I just feel like getting a 137 for me was a really like prestigious time. It was like a, a sense of like elation and not just like relief. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I tried Sunshine again a month or two ago and I, I really enjoyed it. The game's really mm -hmm. fun. There's some new strats here and there, but it seems like the game is kind of stagnant in strats and movement. Like, not, not, not a whole lot has changed. There's small things here and there, but I think with me playing Mario 64 more over the years, I've gotten more used to this community, and I, I, I have made a bit more friends here, and so I, I feel a sense of, like, I don't need to prove my sunshine worth anymore because um, I was really happy to even get three records. But I'm sure I'll try the game again at some point. And just whenever messing around, maybe I'll do runs. Mm -hmm. To be honest, it de depending on how you approach speedrunning, it can really be mm -hmm. a big sacrifice in your life, or it can be just a great thing on top of it. Um, I think I kind of did make some sacrifices to be a top runner in my life, spending more time playing the game instead of going out and hanging with friends and stuff. Ideally, you, you treat Mario like just a... It's a side thing, it's, it's a hobby, and you, you keep your main life things in check, but when you're really, really driven into it, you, you can just get stuck in that for hours. Um, and I think that's the main thing for me, is that I've gotten to a point where I've done a lot, I've, I've achieved a lot, and you almost kind of want to just go back and repair anything that you missed out on. Even though I, everything that's happened, I'm so happy to have experienced and like, it's all been amazing. Mm -hmm. The first thing is being able to have a lot of people that I, I know and I'm, we have in common, um, mm -hmm. being able to attend events all the time every year, see people that I'm good friends with, um, of course, have my own Twitch channel and be able to just play games for a living is amazing. Um, and I do think it, it did teach me things about discipline and practice, especially. It's very easy to doubt yourself with certain things. Um, but through a speed running, you kind of convince yourself, like, if I put in enough work, I can do it. And it sounds cliche, and I always thought it was, but I think speed running proved that for me, personally. Mm -hmm. when, you start, when you start streaming and speed running in general, uh, I find it's, like, it's kind of like mm -hmm. a V, if it were like a graph of like streaming to speed running. Um, because you kind of, you find Twitch, and it's really exciting to see people in your chat, and it's like, wow, I can talk to people and play games at the same time, and I can show people all the work I've been doing, um, and it's really exciting. And the more, you, the more you try to get better at the game and you're focused on your gameplay 
Uh, it definitely takes away from the streaming aspect of it for me personally. I know some people can kind of just do whatever. I know Cheese like talks to people more so. But for me, I just I get really just focused on the game, and that's what I'm trying to have happen. And usually, if runs start going bad, we just start messing around. You know, you just it's like, oh, I'm so tired of this. I want it to be over. And then chat starts talking, and we all hang out. And uh, but it can be really fun. And it can be anything, really. I've never really thought of myself as much of an entertainer, at least not in recent years. Um, when I started making content on YouTube, like commentaries and Let's Plays, I, I thought that was what I wanted to do. And so I, I would be very energetic about how I would introduce myself in my videos and stuff. Um, but when I found speedrunning, I just realized that I wanted to be competitive and I wanted to be the best. And I, I would love for there to be more of it in me where I'm like an entertainer because I think that's a great thing to be able to entertain people, um, make good friends with people and stuff. Obviously, people still you make friends with people if you're a competitor too. But um, I try harder to be a competitor, more so. I mean, the most petty one is like this was petty for a while, then it stops being petty. Mm -hmm. But like saying good luck all the time, it, it can like get to a point where like you've seen GL on your screen like 50 million times, and it's like. Everybody that says it just means to be appreciative. But as a runner, you do kind of just, you just see it on your screen. It's easy to forget that those are actually people in the chat, especially. Um, but that and things, I, I think when chatters set expectations on, on the streamer, it can be pretty irritating because I don't think we like, we, we don't like to be treated like, uh, like a circus performer, sort of, where it's like, Everybody's watching like this inhuman gamer god play. It's more like we're all just hanging out, you know, we're just kind of messing around. A lot of the time, people like me and Suiji were just playing the game. And if you happen to get some crazy record, it just happens usually. And I think I think people, I guess people assume there's a bit more of that entertainer in there than there is of like having an organized set plan for what's happening. Um, but a lot of us are just hanging out, really. Um, I was playing horror games for a while. That was pretty fun. I, I played through Amnesia. I played through, mm -hmm. like, some random games that I wouldn't even remember the name of. Play Mario Kart sometimes. It's usually pretty fun. Um, and it's nice because, you know, when you, when you stream a game that's not Mario 64, you kind of, you lose a lot of viewers, but it's like, the people that stay are the people that are there for the streamer and like the people you've met through the community. And so it's really nice to just hang out with them and not have to deal with the expectations of, oh, why aren't you playing Mario and all this? Um, but it's been really fun playing horror games, Mario Kart, Mario Party, all that. Um, I want to do more of that in the future. Yeah, it started off being really fun, especially because everything happened so quick. I saw the video uh, when it got posted for the challenge, uh, like 30 minutes after it was uploaded and so there wasn't even like a discord for it yet and all that so I just bought the game everybody started to find glitches and it was really fun until with those kind of games you run into problems with things like frame rate caps because a lot of these older games well it's not even an older game but it's a it's a weird game they're kind of not made in a way that works for speedrunning um, in a very fair way uh, so there was a lot of drama about rules like frame rate caps and things like that. Um, and then, of course, there were tricks that were literally one in a million. <laughs> and while it was super irritating to grind for those tricks, it was also like, it felt like winning the lottery, hitting those tricks. And so the feeling of clutching out a run with one of those was genuinely still one of my favorite like speedrunning moments, period. It was like hitting log launch in that Amok Runner run was amazing. It's weird because I, I actually, I think I, I more so wanted to do the, the challenge just because it was most mm -hmm. critical. I want I just liked proving myself to like a big group of people and it wasn't really in towards until the end where we started talking about potentially splitting the money because originally it was just going to be 10k first and then we realized that was kind of unfair especially for how the game is. So it was split to like 6k, 2.5k one I think. But really, the money didn't really, wasn't really in my brain much the entire time, to be honest, until 
until once it was all over. It was just nice to clutch out that run with everybody playing it, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there were a lot of people finding strats in that game. I know I, f I found a few things, but it was mm -hmm. hard to know if you found something or somebody else found it because people would find things and not post it right away. Um, so we all kind of were like working together to find stuff. But I, n I didn't find any of like the big main things in the end. And so really what running the game was like is you would, you would play 15 hours a day, go to bed for like seven hours, wake up, check your phone, check the Discord, and there's like, oh, there's a new five minute skip. Now I got to get on and practice this. And so it was a lot of that. It was a lot of people that have stuck around through the future challenges too, just to find strats really. And that's always been cool to see. Um, but I always more was just a person that would find the strat, or not find it, but I would see it and just execute it, really, more so than find it. Yeah, we had an interview. He was just streaming, I was streaming, and then his chat was like, interview him, interview him. And so I was like, I was kind of nervous, because I mean, he's a big he's a big guy, he's a popular guy. Um, I can't really remember how the interview went, but it was really cool to be able to talk to him. Because like, I've watched a lot of his videos and stuff for like years. Um, and so to win one of his challenges and be able to talk to him after and hear him con congratulate me and stuff was really cool. Mm -hmm. I didn't really have much else than speedrunning until 2021. I, I started working out a lot in 2021. Mm -hmm. um, that was largely when I was getting burnt out from the game. Uh, things in personal life started happening and Mario kind of just wasn't in the, in the headspace. Um, so I was working out a lot just for fun. But to be honest, like... It really is just Mario. When it's Mario, it's just Mario. I, I don't know if other runners could relate to that, really, but, like, I listen to music. I mean, I do things that I enjoy, but when it comes to, like, a hobby, like, my hobby is gaming, and it's speedrunning first for me. It's kind of hard. I don't know, like, the genre names. I guess, like, indie rap, like, indie rock. Uh, I listen to people like Sewer Person. Um... I mean, the thing is, most of the songs I find, I just find on YouTube, and they just appear in my recommended. Um, but I don't really, like, have any favorite artists off the top of my head. A lot of them are very, they're very real. The more emotion that there is in a song for me, the more I can relate to it. Whether it's, like, a sad or happy emotion doesn't really matter, but, like, especially a lot of that connects to speedrunning, you know, trying to keep pushing on and stuff. And so I, I kind of go to music as a way to just be able to, like, hear something that I relate to. Um, and kind of just refresh your minds, really. Um, and I try to take those those mindsets into speedrunning and life in general. Number one is probably it, it's it's been like a three way tie between like Hunter Hunter Death Note mm -hmm. and Attack on Titan. I think Attack on Titans first, but I'm a bit, I'm a bit, big fan of Death Note Hunter Hunter. Um, I liked Sword Art Online when I was like growing up. Then Punk A bullied me for it. <laughs> which is fair. Those are the main ones. I've watched some others that I kind of forgot about, but at this point, I've just been rewatching a lot of stuff, really. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely Aaron Yeager from Attack on Titan. He's my profile picture on, like, stuff. Um, mm -hmm. Basically, like, the mindset I, I learned from him is, like, you were born into this world, and so you can make do, like, you can do what you want. Obviously, that doesn't mean you can do anything you want, but... It, it kind of taught me that, like, no matter who you are, you have a place in the world and you can, like, you can fight for what you want. And he's a big fighter. Um, and so it, it was that kind of mindset that really helps me, like, with working out especially and also with speedrunning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, at Double Down, that was the first time, like, all the 16 star runners had kind of mm -hmm. just been in the same place. Um, and so we'd spend most of the day at the venue, but like the most exciting part of the day was always just going back to the hotel and just talking and chilling. Uh, we have like a story about a grilled, ch grilled chicken sandwich we like bought at a restaurant. That was amazing, all that. Um, but really the 16 star guys I've, I, I'm really close with especially. Um, so it's always nice to go to events and be able to know that they're coming and hang out with them, do things with them. I feel like the community is only going up. In my, in, the, in my opinion, like things are only getting better. Mm -hmm. The thing is that records are getting very difficult to get nowadays. Uh, it used to be like, you know, every month or so you'd have a record. But I mean, the, the 120 record has stood for about eight months at this point. But even so, the community is still super strong. There's super, 
like a ton of people to meet through the community. You know, Simply did a lot for Mario and his work still does a lot. He's probably streaming like today or something. Um, but I don't think Mario is really gonna go anywhere anytime soon. Not until the records are pushed way too low for people to care anymore, but I think there's always gonna be a core Mario 64 community at heart. I think it's possible that ROM hacks could keep things going. The only issue would be like legal issues with ROM hacks because uh, like Nintendo's already very, very bad about how they treat the speedrunning and Smash communities, mainly Smash communities, but I think a lot of people would just go to a new game. But if there's a new 3D Mario game that like lives up to Mario 64, then I think people will just move to that, to be honest. Um, I don't think Odyssey quite had what the Mario runners, Mario 64 runners were looking for. Um, but we'll see. I know there's more coming in the future. And so I think th there's always going to be something. I think speedrunners in general are just very tight knit. Mm -hmm. Well, once I get back into the game, I, I definitely want to get 136 first. I never had my own minute barrier that I got mm -hmm. first in any category. Um, and 136 would be amazing to get. Um, I do want to try 70 because uh, my PB could be improved, but I think my focus will be with 120. Um, and from there, I want to focus on growing my stream more uh, because, you know, I've always been very focused on just the competitive part, but I, I do want to put more work into streaming being a career and something that I can take with me into other careers. And be like, I think Simply is really inspirational in that, in that way because he, he started as a speedrunner, but now he's all kinds of things. He's just... He's a great streamer and talks to all kinds of people, and I think that's great. So I want to try to do something like that.